Welcome to the Word of God Risen. This is Proverbs, and Proverbs are for understanding parables, sayings, and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I'm going to let Tim and John explain a little bit more. This will take about 10 minutes uh, if you want to fast forward through the video. The Book of Proverbs. The word proverb typically refers to a short, clever saying that offers some kind of wisdom, and this book has a lot of those. But they're almost all in the center section of the book, chapters 10 to 29. But there is way more going on in the book of Proverbs, especially at the beginning, chapters 1 through 9, and the conclusion, chapters 30 and 31. The book's been designed with an introduction, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, and it first of all links this book to King Solomon. Now remember the story in 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon had asked God for wisdom to lead Israel well. And so Solomon became known as the wisest man in the ancient world. And we're told in 1 Kings chapter 4 that he wrote thousands of proverbs and poems and collected knowledge about plants and animals. So Solomon was like the fountainhead of Israel's wisdom literature. So while not all the material in this book is written by him personally, he is where Israel's wisdom tradition began. The introduction says that by reading this book, you too can gain wisdom. Now wisdom for most of us means knowledge, but the Hebrew word chokhmah means much more than just mental activity. It refers to action also. So think skill or applied knowledge. This is why back in the book of Exodus, chapter 31, it was artists and craftsmen in Israel who were said to have chokhmah. So the purpose of this book is to help you develop a set of practical skills for living well in God's world. And this gets linked with another key idea in the introduction, the fear of the Lord. Now fear here is not about terror. It's about a healthy sense of reverence and awe for God and about my place in the universe. It's a moral mindset that recognizes I am not God and that I don't get to make up my own definitions of good and evil and right and wrong. Rather, I need to humble myself before God and embrace God's definition of right and wrong, even when that's inconvenient for me. Now, this introduction leads us into the first main section of the book, chapters 1 through 9, which also doesn't contain short one-liner proverbs. Rather, what we find here are ten speeches from a father to a son about how the son should listen to wisdom and cultivate the fear of the Lord and live accordingly, which means a life of virtue and integrity and generosity, all of which lead to success and peace. All right, that's 1 through 9, which we will read right now. This is the Word of God risen. This is Proverbs, and we are going through the explainer videos and reading the Proverbs. Proverbs 1. I'm Jason, by the way. I'm a Christian first JavaScript developer and developer and creator of the Word of God Risen. Enjoy. The link will be in the description to the app and all the sublinks and anything I refer to here. Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and to their learning, add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And this is an exhortation to embrace wisdom, warning against the invitation of sinful men. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My son... If sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's actually blow this up a little bit. Come along with us. Let's lie and wait for an innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will, all, we will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us. 
we will all share in the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net. <clears throat> How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Wisdom's rebuke. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. Out on top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. Then he will pour out his thoughts to us after we repent at his rebuke. I will make known to you my teachings, but since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand since you disregard all my advice, do not accept my rebuke. I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer them. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke. They will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Proverbs 2. The Moral Benefits of Wisdom My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as you search for silver and gold, search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the find the knowledge of God. What does that look like? To cry out for the uh, knowledge and understanding. Cry aloud for it. Give me knowledge! Give me understanding! Is that? That's kind of what that looks like. Be willing to look silly by doing what the Lord says and cry out to Him for wisdom. I know that I've had to do that. I've had to humble myself to the point of um, laying on the floor in puddles of tears in front of Him. So don't be afraid to humble yourself. That's the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And if you look for it as you, sil as you search for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come understanding. I had that on a little thing right here. <laughs> look at that. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth Come understanding and knowledge. What do you know? Proverbs 2. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you, and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. Who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made with God, before God? Surely her house leads down to death and her paths to the spirit of the dead. No one or no one who goes to her returns or untains the path of life. 
Thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Psalm, or sorry, Proverbs 3. Wisdom bestows well-being. My son, do not rebuke. Do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let me read that one more time. It's worthy of being read one more time, I believe. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on your tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in sight of God and man. So make sure we are doing that. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him. He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. See how he does the, uh, the promise and then he tells you um, when it will be fulfilled? When your barns will be fulfilled filled with overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine uh, when you honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your crops that's when he'll do that for us my son do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not rebuke resent his rebuke because of the Lord disciplines those that he loves as a father disciplines the son he delights in blessed are those who find wisdom those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields more returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, those who hold fat, her fast will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then... You will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no sudden fear of death, disaster, or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, Come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you, when you already have it with you now. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they've done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. Once again, everybody, I'm Jason, and I'm a Christian First JavaScript developer, and this is the Word of God Risen. We are on Proverbs 4. I'll leave the link to the app in the description. Get wisdom at any cost. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. 
For I too was, for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. He taught me and said to me, "Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom; she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you." The beginning of wisdom is this: get wisdom. Though it cost all you have. Get understanding. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction; do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set put path. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked, or walk in the way of evil doers. Avoid it; do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, for they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness; they do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Let's do that again. My son. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, so you visualize keeping the word within your sight. The wisdom words of wisdom in Proverbs, for they are life to those who find them, and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. On Jesus, directly before you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Does that sound familiar? John the Baptist telling us, "Make a straight path for the Lord to travel." Words of wisdom coming from the ancient one, right? Proverbs five, warning against adultery. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion in your lips, may preserve knowledge. For the lips, whoops! For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she's bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death; her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life; her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say, "How I hated discipline! How my heart spurned correction! I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructions." Instructors, and I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow into the streets, your streams of water in the public squares, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth.
a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. My, why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all of your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Proverbs 6. Warning against folly. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands and pledged for a stranger, you've been trapped by what you have said, ensnared by your words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself, since you have fallen into the, your neighbor's hands. Go to the point of exhaustion. Give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet... It stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye, signals with his feet and motions with his finger. Plots evil with a de with deceit in his heart. He always stirs up conflict. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Listen closely. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, Feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Warning against adultery. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. This command is a lamp. This teaching is a light. And correction and instruction are the way of life, to life. Look at that. Jesus showing up even way back then. This command is a lamp. This teaching is a light. Correction, instruction are the way to life. Right? The light, the life, and the way. Um... And correction and instruction are the way to life, keeping you from your neighbor's wife. From the smooth talk of a wayward woman. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. For a prostitute can be had for a loaf of bread, but another man's wife preys on your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals? without his feet being scorched. So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. People who do not despise a thief, people do not despise a thief, rather, if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he's starving. Yet, if he's caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all of the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept compensation. He will refuse a bribe, however great it is. So, no matter what you pay a, a man that you have uh, committed adultery with his wife, don't expect him to accept that. You have... Uh, Brought this upon yourself, it says there. Warning against, I'm sorry, Proverbs 7. Warning against the adulterous woman. My son, 
Keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on, the fi on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman. A lot about the adulterous woman in here. It must be important. From the wayward woman with her seductive words. At the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day was fading, as the dark of night set in, then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute with crafty intent. She's unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him, and with a brazen face she said, Today I fulfilled my vows, and I have food from my fellowship offering at my home. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you and I've found you. I've covered my bed with co colored linens from Egypt. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband's not home. He's gone along on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home till full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose, till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her paths. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. This is the wayward and adulterous woman. The woman with a smooth tongue. Don't let her get you. Proverbs 8. Wisdom's call. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the entrance, at the entrance, she cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. Raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. This is wisdom here talking. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. I dare you. I dare you guys. Choose that rather than choice gold. Choose instruction of wisdom rather than money. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. Wisdom is power. There it is. By me, kings reign and rules, rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern and nobles all who rule on earth. I love those who love me. And to those who seek me, find me. With, with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of the righteousness, a way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, 
Before his deeds of old, I was formed long ago. At the very beginning, when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there. When he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side. This is wisdom. I was filled with the light day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me, find life, receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, harm themselves. All who hate me, love death. This is wisdom. Chapter 9, the last one. And then we're going to close out until the um, next section, which I believe Tim uh, was explaining that it what goes uh, 1 through 9, and then it goes 10 through 29, and then 30 and 31 are the conclusion. We'll let him explain a little bit more. Proverbs 9. Invitation of wisdom and folly. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. So wisdom cries aloud for us simple folk to come to her house, and we'll get that wisdom. To those who have no sense, she says, Come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the ways of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebu re re rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I love that. For through wisdom, your days will be many, and your years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. That's, and that's folly. So that was Proverbs 1 through 9. As Tim was saying, um, uh, well, let's move on to let him explain what the second portion is. Oh, there are three... Wrong video. Here we go. The father warns his son also about folly and evil and stupid decisions that will breed selfishness and pride, all leading to ruin and shame. And so the son should make the pursuit of wisdom and the fear of the Lord his highest goal in life. And this way of thinking, it forms the moral logic of this entire book. Now these speeches from the father also clue us into what biblical wisdom literature is and how it's different from other parts of the Bible. These books explore how to live well in God's world, but wisdom is not the same as law, like what Moses gave Israel at Mount Sinai. And it's not the same as prophecy, divine speech to God's people. Rather, wisdom literature has the accumulated insight of God's people through the generations about how to live in a way that honors God and others. 
And so through the book of Proverbs now, these human words about wisdom have been put together as God's word and wisdom to his people, which connects to the other thing you find in chapters 1 through 9. There are four poems from Lady Wisdom. Here, wisdom has been poetically personified as a woman who calls out to humanity to pay attention and to seek her. Wisdom says that she is woven into the fabric of the universe, and so wherever you see people making wise decisions, they are relying on her. So you see someone being generous or having sexual integrity or upholding justice These they are, are all drawing the that on we just uh, wisdom. read about these lady wisdom poems they're a creative poetic way of exploring this idea that we live in god's moral universe and that goodness and justice are objective realities that we ignore to our own peril and so fearing the lord living wisely it's living along the grain of the universe now, together, these two sets of speeches from the Father and Lady Wisdom, they make a powerful claim about this book, that you're not simply reading good advice. You're reading God's own invitation mm. to learn wisdom from Amen. previous generations. And so in the next section of the book, chapters 10 through 29, we find hundreds of ancient proverbs, and they apply wisdom and the fear of the Lord to every life topic you could imagine. Family, work, neighborhood, friendship, sex, marriage, money, anger, forgiveness, alcohol, debt, everything. And these are all filtered through the value system of Proverbs 1 through 9. And now, we'll these discuss Proverbs, that they're all in the next short, video, they're folks. They're easy to memorize. And actually, this section of the book is meant to become a reference work that you return to time and time again throughout the years, which raises some important issues in learning how to read these Proverbs. First of all, Proverbs are by nature about probabilities. So you fear the Lord and you make wise, good choices, things will likely go well for you. And if you don't fear the Lord, you're foolish, your life will likely not go so well. Now, that is all often true, but not always. Which leads to the next point, that Proverbs are not promises. They're not formulas for success. So, some Proverbs, for example. The fear of the Lord prolongs your life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Or, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't turn from it. So yes, fearing God, being a moral person, will most likely lead to a better, longer life, and raising your kids in a stable, loving home does set them up well, but there are no guarantees. Lots of things can and often do go wrong in our world. And so lastly, Proverbs by nature focus on the general rule, but not the exceptions, which are many. And the wisdom books actually aren't ignorant of that. The exceptions are what the other wisdom books, Job and Ecclesiastes, are all about. And together, these acknowledge that life is too complex for simple formulas, which is why we need all of the wisdom books together to get the bigger picture. This all leads to the final section of the book, two large collections of poems. First, poems from a man named Agur, who begins by acknowledging his own ignorance and folly and his great need for God's wisdom. And then Agur discovers that divine wisdom has been given to him, in the scriptures, which teach him how to live well. And so Agur is put before us as like a model reader of the book of Proverbs, somebody who's always open to hearing God's wisdom through the scriptures. The final poems are connected to a man named Lemuel. He's a non-Israelite king, and he passes on the wisdom that was given to him by his mom. It's guidance for being a wise and just leader. And then the final poem is an acrostic or an alphabet poem where each line begins with a new letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the entire poem's about the woman of noble character. It depicts a woman who lives according to the wisdom of Proverbs and stands like a model of someone who takes God's wisdom and then translates it into practical decisions in everyday life, at work or at home, in her family and in her community. So the book opened with words from a father to a son about listening to Lady Wisdom, and so now the book closes by offering the words of a mother to her son about a woman who lives wisely. The book of Proverbs is for every person in every season of life. It's a guide for living wisely and well in God's good world, and that's what the book of Proverbs is all about. Uh, I just want to thank Tim and John, uh, John Collins and Tim Mackey for the Bible Project videos. Uh, they are amazing.
please go check them out at thebibleproject.com. Uh, I want to give all them all the credit. Um, and sometimes they end their videos uh, asking for free will uh, donations, uh, but they didn't on this one, so I just wanted to uh, advocate for them. Uh, I also have a giving button on the app. Uh, if you ever felt led to do that, that's, um, that's wonderful. If not, I enjoy doing this. It's uh, my Noah's Ark that I have built for the Lord. And yes, he did call me and uh, give me this vision uh, while I was in uh, my tech degree school that I was going to build a Bible app. And whatever this becomes, uh, it started with a, a spirit-led idea that um, I am soaking in the Word every day. I'm also looking for wisdom and knowledge within the field of web development. So those two just um, gratefully came together within God's will, and He told me to build this boat uh, as it is, as it what is your Noah's Ark, Jason. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to follow the calling uh, that uh, God has so graciously given me, and the new life uh, that He has given me uh, from making me a reborn Christian. I really appreciate you guys checking this out. I hope the videos are getting uh, better and more fluid. I know that I, they feel like they're getting a little bit better. Uh, please like, subscribe to the, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, give if you feel led. And that is all. God bless you. This is the Word of God risen. Uh, have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow or the next day with Proverbs 10 through 29 intro.